first and foremost, uh, we'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 territory. And also, I guess we would like to thank um, the elders, um, you know, for starting us off in a good way. Also, um, for um, prayer for our food that we enjoyed so much at lunchtime. And uh, also acknowledge all the elders, knowledge keepers, and cultural advisors that are here today. Um, and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, my name is Melissa Purcell. I am the Acting Supervisor with First Nation, Métis, and Inuit Education. I am from Treaty 8 Territory. I am Dene from Smith's Landing, First Nation. And I'd like to invite uh, my colleagues up here to come up here and introduce themselves in the best way that they know how. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Glenda Thiel, and I um, was born here in Calgary on traditional Treaty 7 territory, but I grew up in Edmonton in traditional Treaty 6 territory. Um, I am the mother of two, and I am a third generation settler um, who has a passion and heart for the work that we are doing and reconciliation. Up and down, up and down. Tanse kakyo wapiskasit Mr. Tim Nisi Gasun. Nagoachi o chenya maga amskochi was kahegene knuigen egwa natato scan. Egwa nineta egwa nikagwe ni hiwayan. So, hello everybody. My name is Jeremy Albert. I'm from Sweetgrass First Nation um, in Treaty 6 territory in Saskatchewan. But I, but I work and uh, live in Edmonton and I work as a consultant for Edmonton Public Schools. And I, I, you, some of you heard me say this before, but usually I don't get nervous when I talk Cree in front of a group, but when I know there's Cree speakers in the room, I get like, <laughs> I feel like the pressure's on. So uh, so yeah, a little nervous speaking Cree in front of all these uh, Cree speakers right now, but uh, something that I'm trying to learn and it's something that's really important to me. So, uh, hi, hi. <laughs> All right, so um, up here, I think we were joking, I guess, when we arrived here. Uh, the first time that we came here, there was one person that represented First Nation Métis Unit Education at Edmonton Public Schools a few years ago. And last year, there were two of us, and now there are three. So we are growing by one, and we're really thankful to be here. But um, we're representing a team of 13 people. Um, it can, it's comprised of consultants that are... Um, uh, and I'll share a bit more about through our presentation about the work that we do. Uh, we do have a liaison within our team. Uh, although that we're moving away from uh, having liaisons within our central team, that liaisons are hired directly by our school uh, schools. Our district is very unique that um, our district is site-based managed. So um, the principals are hiring liaisons to work directly within their school communities. So that's something that we're very supportive of. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a really amazing team, very passionate team, and uh, uh, today we're going to talk to you about reconciliation and education, and looking at building capacity within our district, and also speak about um, our district, you know, is comprised of a community, and our communities consist of students, um, educators, families, community members, and with that, our elders, knowledge keepers, and cultural advisors. So we're looking to, to build capacity within all of our school communities. Our district is, um, we have about 202-ish schools within our district. Um, there's approximately 90,000 students within our district. Um, there are approximately 8,000 self-identified First Nation, Métis, and Inuit students within our district. So our, one of our really, like, prime objectives is really building capacity within our schools because how can 13 people support all 202 schools? Um, so we're going to share a bit about the work that we're doing and uh, really excited about that. Um, the picture that I have up on this slide, um, I like to, to share this picture because it's a picture of um, um, a really, very really old um, school. It's a junior high school. It's Highlands uh, Junior High School within Edmonton. And uh, there, um, this school has done some amazing things, uh, lots of amazing work. And uh, we often talk about within our team that a lot of our schools, they look like residential schools because they are so old. And um, we work hard in helping support our schools, create a welcoming, warm community environment. And so that can look like sound like, feel like, many different things. Um, this was a day uh, they brought in, uh, there was a whole bunch of people that were involved in schools and students were involved in 
uh, many different things. And so this teepee was set outside. Um, Elder Wilson Bearhead was um, providing storytelling to small groups of students. And there's a picture of me peeking out of this teepee. And uh, when my one of my colleagues, she took the picture and we, we were laughing about it after. Like, oh, you know, that looks kind of funny. But then I look at it and I think, wow, this, I feel, represents um, some of the work that we're doing. Um, looking how can we uh, weave First Nation, Métis, and education and culture um, to, to make it living and breathing within our schools. And Highland School is a prime example of um, what can be done um, in collaboration with our team. Um, so there's a few things that uh, we, we take great pride in doing, in, in showing at our district that we are not just one more thing. And because oftentimes with our work, it can feel like, wow, you're, you're adding um, you know, more resources to my plate, you're adding more things to my plate. I'm already feeling like I have a lot to do. And so we, what we do is we take um, and look at our district, like our strategic goals for our district, um, also our First Nation Métis Unit Guiding Document. Um, we do have a board policy and administrative regulations. There's foundational pieces that we take those and we try to our best to bring them alive into our schools. And uh, we also try hard and, um, you know, demonstrating that we can become, we are a part of the district, whether it be supporting district-wide initiatives um, or being strategic and intentional about certain um, planning um, that schools can do. So I just wanted to make mention of that. Um, we framed our presentation um, with this wonderful model that was shared um, to us and so we're, we're um, you know, quite proud to share this. So and we're going to speak about learning to be and you know, we talked about, wow, like in 30 minutes, what can we share in 30 minutes? There's so much and I know you're all feeling the same thing. Um, so what we thought we would do is we would share with you um, how we're creating um, space. The space within um, our classroom schools, um, within professional learning sessions, for, for educators to want to listen. Um, and creating that space where they feel respected and they can ask those really tough questions or those questions that they don't feel comfortable necessarily asking. And so building relationships is a really important piece um, in our work. And, and I was so thankful for um, an Elder to, that was speaking about it just before lunch because relationships are super important. Um, and relationships can happen in a variety of places. Um, um, I know face-to-face -face is really, really important. Um, but oftentimes we need to utilize um, space and think outside the box. And so we've created space with on, on our website um, where we, we house a lot of our resources, supports, and information. Um, and we've also created a, um, a, a Google Plus community. So it's a space, uh, Edmonton Public Schools is very Google, like we're Google crazy. So, um, so we, we've jumped on board and really um, seized this opportunity for us to share um, some of the great things that are happening within our district, outside of our district. Um, so we have, um, you know, within our district we have about, well, every school has identified a lead teacher um, and so we brought them together for professional learning and I know Jeremy will speak a bit about that in a little bit, but we communicate with our lead teachers bi-weekly um, and we also make regular updates to our Google Plus community as well. Um, up on our on the, the slide there, there's a poster, and this poster is something that is new to us and that we are beginning to share this with our district. It's a acknowledgement statement, acknowledgement of the treaty territory and also our, our First Nation, Métis, and Inuit um, people and cultures. And so um, the artwork that is displayed up here is has been created by a grade 12 student from one of our high schools. Uh, we did a, uh, a mini art contest and uh, so the a graphic designer within uh, our central office worked to create this beautiful poster. And so we're sharing that with our district is, you know, display this proudly um, and also to use that as a teachable moment. Because what does it mean to be on treaty territory? And why do we acknowledge this? And so we use these little teachable moments or, or um, ways for us to, to engage and share and um, build relationships. So um, this is something that we're sharing with our district. And it's on our website in case you're wanting to, to print it, look at it. And you're more than welcome to use it as well. 
Um, I wanted to share about a, it's a one minute video clip um, from a video and this video is, was created from the Journey to Reconciliation student conference. Uh, we collaborated with Edmonton Catholic and, I, and I'm so happy that they're here today. Um, so we collaborated with um, Edmonton Catholic School District as well as the City of Edmonton to, to, um, to offer a student conference. And so it was following the year after our mayor had announced it was the year of reconciliation within Edmonton. And so um, students came together and were engaged in many different sessions, but out of that came this video. And so this video is something that we're using also as a uh, teachable moment for, for many within our district. And you'll see that there's, um, uh, you know, our, our superintendent, Edmonton Catholic superintendent, the mayor. Um, so lots of, you know, people are on here as well as students. Um, talking about this work. So I'm going to uh, play the one minute video clip from here. Um, so this video is also on our website and you're more than welcome to view it and use it and share it. Um, it it's about a 14 minute video and uh, what I'm going to play for you is a little bit of tail end and this is our um, Daryl Robertson, our superintendent of Edmonton Public Schools. Speaking about relationships. This isn't just about uh, our Aboriginal kids. It's not just about our Aboriginal community, our Aboriginal families. It's about all of us. It's about all of us embracing each other as people and understanding that where we can contribute, we need to. Um, it's about, at the end, and something I call social capital. It's about relationships. Uh, it's about being able to, uh, to know each other and to connect with each other. And at the end of the day, develop that trust for us to be able to make a cooperative action in our community possible. But in the end, reconciliation really lies with each one of us. It's about what we learned and how we want to craft together a Canada where every child's dreams matters, where no one is left behind, where everyone holds their head up because they're so proud of their heritage and where they come from. And that together we build a country that we really, truly, feel proud of. Isn't that what we want to do? So within our team, we're always trying to find ways that we can um, inspire people. And uh, we're, we're using, um, not using, we are um, embracing the calls to action that uh, have been recently released. Um, we're also, uh, we're sharing that with our district, sharing uh, and trying to work really hard and inspiring people to, to take ownership of those calls to action. And also, um, we talk often about uh, the upcoming, the draft teaching quality standards, as well as the school leader stand standards and the school authority standards, that now is a time for you to, um, to learn to learn more so that when it comes time where you actually, when you have to speak about this in front of your students and families and community members that you feel confident and comfortable to do this. Um, so um, that's a little bit about what I wanted to share with you about um, learning to be. So moving on to learning to know, um, the part where with us, how this worked in our district, uh, worked in a number of ways, but really trying to create that foundational piece for um, teachers and staff in our district. And so Melissa touched on the fact that we have over 200 schools and we have a lead teacher, we've identified a First Nations, Métis, and Inuit lead teacher in each of those schools. Uh, so we started work last year where we had lead teacher sessions and that continued into this year. So in the fall, we had sessions for all of our teachers, um, really just trying to create that foundational piece, um, looking at a wide range of activities. Um, and it's been, it's been really, really good. And April 7th, we had a, a reconciliation through education uh, PL for our lead teachers too, which was really good. So uh, really equipping our teachers with that knowledge and, and that, that learning to know peace so they can then take that into their classrooms. One of the things that we also do for our teachers is um, cultural engagement sessions. And this is really goes beyond just the teachers. This goes into the classrooms. We have a, um, an amazingly talented uh, staff member named Holly Uzichipi. Uh, Dakota Sue, and she goes in and does school visits, um, cultural engagement visits, really weaving uh, curriculum and culture together. One of the things that she does on a yearly basis is she holds um, a junior high health week 
And so we get junior high students from across our district and spend a week um, down at our, at our central office. And Holly leads them through um, kind of land-based identity and, and art teachings and really uh, teaches the kids a lot of amazing techniques. And so this year the, the theme was um, reconciliation and, and utilizing the calls to action in, in art pieces. And um, the pieces the students made were, were just amazing. <clears throat> the opportunity was also extended to teachers in our district. So there's teachers who spent a day um, down again at our, at our office and, and went through this um, call to action piece. And so the best part of it all was um, on June 1st, all the students and the teachers are showcasing their art pieces at the Stanley Milner Library, um, like a public exhibition. So they get a chance to talk about uh, what they did and how they are how they are working towards uh, truth and reconciliation and responding to those calls to action. The blanket exercise we mentioned a little bit earlier, but we um, we do that with our lead teachers. We get called out a lot to work with school staffs and in school classrooms. Uh, we did it with our our superintendent and our board of trustees last year. So it's something that we do we do quite a bit. We're also working with schools to uh, facilitate student leaders to facilitate the exercise. So we do it in, in high school and junior high. So we have junior high leaders and high school leaders who facilitate the exercise for, for either other school staff or for other, um, maybe some division two students or other schools in their, in, their, in, their, in their school. Our district, we're also very fortunate. We do a um, new staff orientation, whether you're fresh out of university or you're an experienced teacher, if you're new to our district, you've got to go through a new staff orientation. It applies to teachers, to management, to custodial staff, to EAs. Um, everyone goes through it, and part of our part of our day is changing the conversation where we we talk about the historical and con contemporary realities that First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students and families face. And so, it's a really good uh, again foundational piece for our new staff coming into our district to to have that foundation. One of the uh, one of the many amazing parts of my job is um, I get to do a lot of, um, we get to work on a lot of projects. And, and the project that I've been fortunate enough to work on for the past year or so has been um, creating an edu site. Um, it's called the Amiskwichi Waskayagan edu site. And it's looking at the history of Edmonton from an indigenous perspective. Um, it's been really um, quite, a, quite a learning for me personally, and I'm still continuing to learn and um, really examining Edmonton kind of prior to 1900. Um, looking at, you know, when we acknowledge territory, we acknowledge the, the amount of time that First Nations um, people have been occupying these lands and, and Métis people and Inuit people who, who have been to these lands is just acknowledging that history. There's a lot of history within Edmonton um, that, that a lot of people don't know and certainly I didn't know. Um, especially regarding the Papas Chase First Nation and, and similar stories across the Prairie Provinces. But um, so I've been been fortunate enough to work on a resource, um, creating lessons, um, and really um, trying to to get teachers to learn about the history as well from that Indigenous perspective. And on May 18th, I'm going to be hosting a teacher PL for teachers in our district, where we'll go through the resource, and then we're going to go through a River Valley Walk and looking at the the historical areas that lie within the River Valley. Um, including the um, the Rossdale burial grounds that are located really, really right in the heart of Edmonton, and and so the intention is to get teachers out with students to have students explore this history, um, get out on the land, so to speak, even though it is within the city, but it's in the River Valley, and really good opportunity. So it's really, really exciting. The brain game was touched on before, so we've uh, we've done some work with the brain game too, and we're looking at um, introducing that more into our district as well. Moving on to learning to do, um, project-based learning. So we have some teachers and schools in our district that are really, really good at this. And as a team, we, we recently had the opportunity through the ERLC to go through some project-based learning PL, so our whole unit went through it. But we have a, a teacher in our district who, who took all the information from our lead teacher sessions, and she started a, a five-month uh, project with her grade five, six students. And it was, it was really remarkable. They, they ended the, the five months with an evening where they showcased their projects. And it was, um, it was really transformational, not only for the students, but for the teacher um, herself. She was really, really moved by it. Um, there was elder involvement throughout the process. And 
Um, a lot of the parents who left that evening commented how they didn't know a lot of the information that was shared. A uh, wide, wide variety of topics, but it was really, really, um, a really powerful experience for all those involved. So, um, we're constantly working hard in developing resources and or bringing resources together that are recommended for use within classrooms. And so, we're excited that we worked on developing a uh, early learning educate. Um, so, um, it, with a literacy and numeracy focus, so that is something that is new to our district, as well as a Métis educate um, that we have offered to our schools. I know we're looking at developing a treaty educate as well for our school. Um, just really quickly, our educates are, are um, really it's a, essentially a box. It's a box full of many cultural items, um, but lots and lots of background information for our, our teachers and for our students, so that they know what the significance is of the materials within that box. And so they're designed around various themes. And so the ones, uh, the Métis Educate, uh, these are borrowed, lent out to our district, um, free of charge. And uh, we often try and put a little plug in there for educators, you know, if you really love this Educate, maybe you should think about creating your own in collaboration with other surrounding schools that you can look at um, having one in your school developed with students and community members to create something that is unique for your school community. Um, we've also been working on a protocol document and uh, this one's been very challenging for, for our team because we know that when it comes to writing down protocol that that is very, um, it's, it's really uncomfortable and it's something that we really shouldn't do. Um, however, we're doing it in a way that is uh, general enough that it's not offensive, and uh, but specific enough that our educators feel empowered um, to begin to have conversations with elders, knowledge keepers, and cultural advisors. Because we have many who said, wow, I'm so scared to do the wrong thing, and so they'll just you know, not do it. Um, and uh, Or there are some that don't understand the importance of why you would want to engage with someone in the community. So we're using it really as a, another, I guess, teaching moment for, for our schools to engage with people. Um, just so you know, our protocol document has been, um, we received guidance from many, many elders, knowledge keepers and cultural advisors from throughout the province. And uh, we were hoping to have this released in the fall of this year, um, but we know with um, you know, with um, documents or guides like this that we have to make sure that we are being very respectful and that we are seeking guidance from as many people as possible. Um, so we, we are not uh, rushing this um, particular guide. Um, but I, I know that it will be very well um, received by many teachers within our district. Um, I, Literacy and numeracy, you know, we have um, many, just like all of you, have many district-wide initiatives or school-wide initiatives um, surrounding literacy and numeracy. So we work hard in bringing First Nation, Métis, and Inuit education and culture into these large district initiatives. And we know that it's so important to be at that table um, when that initial planning begins with large initiatives like this. So we work hard again on building relationships across many decision units within our central office um, so that they'll they'll invite us so that we can sit down and uh, begin planning um, and providing feedback from the very beginning. And I just want to welcome um, Glenda to speak a bit about the work that she's been doing. So sorry, one thing I, I, I forgot to mention is um, through the work that we were doing with our, with our edu site looking at the history is um, I had an opportunity uh, earlier, a few months ago, to, uh, it was through Solange and through Parks Canada and, and Barb is here, I uh, had an opportunity to, to head out to Jasper. It was really tough, but um, <laughs> I, I had an opportunity to go there and uh, take part in a, in a pilot project that they're doing in, in the teaching of the mountain people and looking at the history of the um, Indigenous peoples who were there and kind of um, what happened as, as time has gone on and, and, and Jasper was formed into a national park. So I just wanted to, to thank you for that opportunity. It was a really great learning experience and I know there's people from um, Edmonton Catholic there and there's some teachers from Edmonton Public too. So a really good chance to network and, and to take part in, the, in that opportunity. So thank you. And here's Glenda. <laughs> Put me last so I can move the mic down. <laughs> So I'm just going to talk about the last point on this slide, which is the early years guide. So in um, collaboration with one of my coworkers, we're working to create an early years guide for First Nation, Métis, and Inuit families 
um, who are looking to choose Edmonton Public Schools. Um, so it has information um, about play-based learning. It has information about, uh, sorry, it has information about health uh, concerns. If you want to look for health, dental, any of that, how can you access any of this in, in Edmonton? And through this, we have consulted with um, former members of the EC Map project. We've also looked to our with internally within our early years cohort group, our early learning group. Um, we've also consulted outside of um, Edmonton Public and looked at um, some of the Aboriginal Head Starts with Bandero, and we've also consulted elders with this. So we're looking forward to when it'll come out, and it'll be on the, the website. So this slide, the Learning to Relate slide, is, is all about relationships, and as you heard Daryl talk about, relationships are so important. Um, we heard um, Elder Sykes talk about um, building relationships as well and how important that is. So within Edmonton Public Schools, um, we have family nights that we are partners with. Um, also, we're looking to have uh, schools who want to host, part, host family nights. Um, on the Empowering the Spirit website, um, in collaboration with ERLC, uh, we worked on how to host a family night guide, and you can find that under the cultural awareness piece. But within um, Edmonton, we work with community partners such as social workers, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, Canadian Native Friendship Centre, the Bandero. Organizations that we work together and we, we, we all cook, we make hamburger soup. I learned how to make meatball soup this year. <laughs> and we serve the families and we also have cultural activities. The picture that you see there is Aaron Paquette, who um, is a First Nation artist, who did some storytelling with the families. And then he told the story, because this was in Mill Woods, he told the story of the 1987 tornado. And then he had the kids draw pictures and he pasted them on his artwork. It, it was fabulous. Um, we have also uh, built relationships with uh, Treaty 6, uh, Confederacy of Treaty 6, who host the Treaty 6 Educators Conference. They just had their fifth annual and Edmonton Public was able to um, partner and provide um, some sessions there, but we also attended sessions, which um, some, of our, some of my colleagues were very excited uh, to make all of those connections and be able to learn, because um, sometimes we don't get to step out of our own roles. And then lastly, uh, building relationships is the Building Collaboration and Capacity and Education grant through um, Alberta Education that we're um, looking to move forward with and building those relationships and understanding where our students are from, building those community relationships to be able to support transition support should they come um, with to Edmonton Public Schools or if they're going um, back to their uh, band operated school. And then be able, being able to also learn for us cultural pieces to share, um, to collaborate on anything we can to create those webs of support to support those relationships that need to be built to um, enhance the learning for so many of our students. All right, so lastly, yes. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm just watching the time here and we're doing good. <laughs> uh, so um, continuing our journey, we know and we recognize there is so much work to be done. And I know that you know that. Um, but I, it's important to take time to celebrate um, all of the accomplishments that have happen, are happening um, while we are on this journey, whether it be a really small, tiny success or something really large. And it's really important to take a moment um, to reflect on that and celebrate that. I have this quote up here on education is what got us here, and education is what will get us out. And we strongly believe that um, our schools within the district really have the best intentions um, to support our students. But we often hear, I don't know what I don't know. And uh, that's what we feel is a really huge part of our job and our work and um, you know, having conversations and sharing um, a lot of the um, work, work that can be done. And uh, I want to share with you, um, just lastly, um, this is a picture of a box that we've created. And this box is a, we're calling it a reconciliation um, commitment box, similar to the Bentwood box. 
And uh, this box is, has a collection of Project of Heart tiles that were created from all of our lead teachers throughout our district. And we are looking to have a, um, a celebration within the Centre for Education uh, on June, uh, June 3rd, which is the anniversary of the closing event for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And uh, we're um, calling on our district, district leadership, students, schools, uh, community members, families, um, to come forth and put gestures of commitment towards reconciliation on either in the Centre for Education and make them into this box, um, or to have their own celebrations um, or commitments within their school. And so we are working um, in collaboration with Edmonton Catholic School as well as the City of Edmonton to do something all together. So within um, both of our districts in the City of Edmonton, um, we are going to be witnessing each of our events um, on June 3rd, um, beginning when it, uh, within the Centre for Education and then walking towards Aboriginal Learning Services with Edmonton Catholic, and then lastly going to the City of Edmonton. So I invite you, um, you know, to take part in that day wherever you are um, and, uh, you know, put forth uh, your commitment to continuing um, on our journey towards reconciliation and supporting First Nation, Métis, Inuit students um, and eliminating that achievement gap for our kids. Um, so I guess on behalf of us, thank you. Um, uh, it's really honored to be here. So thank you very much.